Hello students. Today we are going to cover the topic reflection of waves by a perfect conductor normal incidence case. In this we study how the wave behaves when it is comes normally on the any material made up of the perfect conductor. Firstly some of the characteristics that are followed in this. The when a plane wave in air is incident normally on the surface of a perfect conductor it is entirely reflected back. So none of the energy of the incident wave can be transmitted. That means uh, the wave the which is incident normally on the perfect conductor is totally reflected back in the same medium. No wave is transmitted to the other side of the perfect conductor. And B part is there are no losses in the perfect conductor. So no energy is absorbed in it. The total energy that comes that whole energy is reflected back. No energy is transmitted to the another medium. The amplitude of E and H vectors in the reflected wave are the same as in the incident wave. There is no change in the amplitude but there is a phase reversal occurs because the wave comes firstly in one direction then it is reflected back in the same opposite direction. 180 degree phase reversal will occur here. Now in this topic we are studying firstly for the electric field and then for the magnetic field case. Now starting with the case of electric field, let a plane wave traveling in the z direction incident normally on the surface of perfect conductor at z is equals to zero plane. Uh, it is as shown in this figure. The wave is incident normally on this surface of perfect conductor at z is equals to zero this is the direction of propagation of wave that we assumed it as the z direction when it is incident normally it is totally reflected back in the same direction that means there is no change in the amplitude of the wave but there occurs a phase reversal between the incident wave and the reflected wave okay so the expression for the electric field of the incident wave is it is we denoted it here with e1 e1 is equals to ei e minus j beta z here beta is the phase shift constant z is represented the direction of propagation that what we assumed it as z direction and ei is the amplitude of the incident wave okay it is same written now the expression for the reflected wave it can be represented as E2 it is equals to E R E J beta Z. Let's see the expression again here it is minus J beta Z and here is J beta Z because there is change only in the phase shift there is no change in the amplitude. So here it is J beta Z. E R is the amplitude of the reflected wave J beta Z is positive because the direction of wave is now reversed that is in the minus z direction opposite to the z axis. The boundary conditions which are applied here are uh, this we can already discussed in the previous lectures the various boundary conditions. Firstly is the tangential component of E vector is continuous across the boundary that is E tan 1 is equals to E tan 2 is equals to 0 at z is equals to 0. Second boundary condition is E is 0 within the conductor. This requires that the resultant electric field, this is the resultant of incident wave and the reflected wave. Resultant electric field must be 0 at z is equals to 0. Therefore, now to calculate the resultant electric field ER, it is equals to E1 plus E2. That is the summation of incident wave plus the reflected wave that must be equal to 0 at z is equals to 0. Now, ER is equals to Putting the values here, E1 is equals to EI E minus J beta Z and E2 is equals to ER E J beta Z. Put down these values here and this is equals to 0 or EI is equals to EI plus ER is equals to 0. That why we write it here as because this EI is in the one direction and ER is the opposite direction that's why EI is equals to minus ER. This implies that the amplitude of incident and reflected electric field strengths are equal but a phase reversal of 180 degree on reflection. Now the resultant electric field can be now written as 
er here we can write as z because we assume direction is the is z z direction it is equals to e i e minus j beta z and plus e r e j beta z now from this equation e i is equals to e r putting this value here we put here e r equals to minus e i taking this e i common we get this and then resultant e r comes out to be taking negative sign out then e j beta z minus e minus j beta z now multiply and divide this right hand side by 2j when we multiply and divide it by 2j this becomes the formula for the sign of beta z because sin beta z is equals to e j beta z minus e minus j beta z divided by 2j so we can write it here as sin beta z now in the time varying form it can be written as er z t t because we can write it here now the same equation in the time varying form this is the only the real part for this equation real part of this equation and for the real part it can be written as minus 2j e i sin of beta z e j omega t this can be added for writing the same equation in the time varying form so the real part of minus 2j e i sin of beta z e j omega t can be split into the cos omega t plus j sin omega t and similarly this is the expansion opening the bracket now taking the real part for this only and we get this solution that the resultant electric field that is equals to 2 ei sin beta z sin of omega t now this equation shows that the incident and the reflected waves combine to produce a standing wave the variation of er is shown in the figure standing wave why we can call it as standing wave because the same wave can be reflected back by the perfect conductor now we can see it from here the this is the incident wave and this opposite is the reflected wave and it appears like the standing wave that wave is not moving it remains still so the conclusions from this is the magnitude of electric field varies sinusoidally with distance from the reflecting plane now at z is equals to 0 or at z is equals to n lambda by 2 where n is 1 2 3 and so on er will be 0 er is maximum at z is equals to m lambda by 4 where m is 1 3 and 5 the maximum value of er is 2i in this equation the maximum value of resultant electric field is 2i when this component becomes unity okay now studying the same equation for the magnetic field vector now the expression for the magnetic field of the incident wave can be written like same h1 is equals to h i e minus j beta z here h i is the amplitude of the incident wave for a reflected wave it can be written similarly as written in the electric field h r is equals to e j beta z and the boundary conditions that are applied here are h tan 1 minus h tan 2 is equals to j s and h i is equals to minus h r but if this is true then the incident and reflected energy will have the same direction which cannot be true thus the magnetic field strength must be reflected without reversal of phase therefore h i and h r should be same at z is equals to zero that means h i is equals to h r in the electric field case we have studied that e i is equals to minus e r but here h i is equals to h r it why it is so because we have already studied that e vector and h vector are perpendicular to each other now if e vector comes normal to this perfect conductor then h vector which is perpendicular perpendicular to this e vector comes parallel to this surface so there is no phase reversal for the h vector there is phase reversal occurs only for the e vector so the resultant we can calculate it like the same that is the summation of incident wave plus the reflected wave h1 plus h2 putting down their equations from here now as hr is equals to hi there is no phase reversal occurs for the magnetic field so it can be written like this taking hi common we have put in here hr is equals to hi 
now multiply and divide the right hand side by 2 and this becomes the formula for cos of beta z now writing the same equation in the time varying form it can be written as the real part for this and e j omega t can be written along with this so expanding this e j omega t cos of omega t plus j sine of omega t then taking the real part only for this equation we get hr that is the resultant for the magnetic field is equals to 2 hi cos of beta z cos of omega t this equation also represents a standing wave the variation of hr is shown in this figure this is how the h vector varies on the perfect conductor here there is a difference because here in the case of electric field we get the sine terms and the wave can be shown like this but in case of magnetic field case here we get the cosine terms so the wave can be shown like this okay so these are the conclusions hr is equals to 0 at z m lambda by 4 where m is equals to 1 3 and 5 and hr is maximum at z is equals to 0 and z is equals to n lambda by 2 n is 1 2 3 and the maximum value for hr is again 2 hi it is maximum when cos cosine angle is 0 degree that is the maximum value for the resultant magnetic field is 2 hi so in this lecture we have studied the how the wave behaves when it is incident on the material of the perfect conductor so it is totally reflected back there is no transmitted to the another side of the medium there is no energy loss so the equations points to remember are the equations for the electric field vector which we get in this form and the equation for the magnetic field vector which we get in this form thank you